let's talk for a second about this. This is footage. It's a little bit hard to tell at first what's going on here, but this is footage of a young woman being arrested uh, by mostly plainclothes police or security officers of some kind. This was shot at uh, the main airport in Moscow late last week. And as you can tell from the footage, the woman looks a little bit out of it. Like seeing somebody arrested like this, I think, is always a little bit unsettling, just in human terms. Her demeanor and her affect here is was sort of particularly worrying after this arrest video first surfaced a few days ago. Um, but as of this weekend, we can at least vouch for the fact that this young woman is alive and she appears to be okay because reporters this weekend were also allowed to shoot footage of her inside a sort of uh, cage, a sort of um, box inside a Moscow courtroom. Uh, the subtitles on this, you'll see they're subtitled in English. The subtitles here, I'll tell you, have been supplied by Radio Free Europe. So this young woman in this clip you're about to see, she's speaking in Russian, but those subtitles tell us what she's saying in English. And if you read along with what she says here, it does sort of make that hair stand up on the back of your neck. <laughs> That is Anastasia Vashkevich uh, speaking from a Russian courtroom, a district court in Moscow this weekend. That court appearance follows her arrest at Moscow's main airport on Thursday of last week. And what's going on with this story um, is, is this. This was February 8th of last year. You might recognize this guy, uh, the guy who made this video and who you see hosting this video. It's Alexei Navalny. Alexei Navalny is the highest profile opposition figure in Russia. Vladimir Putin last year would not let Alexei Navalny run against him for president of the Russian Federation. Putin and his government lock up Alexei Navalny whenever they get a chance, whenever they decide to seize on a convenient pretext. But February 8th last year, he released this video and the video focused on footage, focused on video footage and photographs that had been shot in the first instance by Anastasia Vashikevich, that young woman who we just saw arrested at that Moscow airport and then in a cage in a Moscow courtroom. Vashikevich's claim was that she was hired to work as an escort on a yacht trip in August 2016. That ended up being a story of national significance because while she was on that yacht trip, she shot footage of her host, uh, Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska, and the deputy prime minister of Russia, who's the other guy with Deripaska in these images. These are photos of the two men aboard that yacht. On the video footage that was highlighted by Navalny, these two men can be seen and heard discussing the relationship between Russia and the United States. And again, this is August 2016. It's in the context of the U.S. presidential election. And again, this video, these pictures, they were shot by this young woman, Anastasia Vashukevich, during the U.S. presidential campaign in August 2016. Navalny dug them up and made his video expose highlighting the footage just last year, in February 2018. And we can date that really specifically because when he did that in February of last year, it basically broke the internet in Russia. The Russian government freaked out so badly about this expose that Navalny was running and about that footage on which it was based. It freaked them out so badly that Deripaska and the Russian government got a court in Russia to block Alexei Navalny's website so nobody could access Navalny's website from inside Russia anymore. He's the main opposition figure in the entire country. The Russian government also took steps because of that expose, because of that footage of those two guys on the yacht. The Russian government also took steps to try to ban all Russian access to all of YouTube and to all of Instagram. 
The yacht footage had initially been posted on Instagram. Navalny's video was posted on YouTube. And so the Russian government looked at this expose and decided that the Russian people would no longer get access to either YouTube or Instagram. They tried that in response to that expose. It freaked them out so badly. So Navalny posted his expose based on her footage February 8th of last year. There's a completely over-the-top Russian government freakout in response. Meanwhile, this young woman who shot the footage, the woman who said she'd been working as an escort for Deripaska on the yacht, who made those recordings, who posted them on her Instagram account, when this whole thing blew up in February of last year, she happened to be not in Russia. She was in Thailand, where she was involved in some sort of sex seminar for Russian-speaking tourists. I don't know. I don't know. There is an international sex tourism trade in Thailand, like there is in a lot of countries. People who participate in that uh, sex trade in Thailand do sometimes get arrested in that country. When Anastasia Vashukevich got arrested in Thailand because of her participation in that sex seminar, uh, her treatment by Thai authorities did seem to be sort of inflected by the fact that she had just been the source and in some ways the protagonist of this big expose that at that moment was driving the Russian government crazy. She was arrested in February 2018, days after the Navalny expose went public. Within a couple days of her arrest in Thailand, the head of the Kremlin Security Council arrived personally in Thailand. He's also a former head of the FSB, the Russian spy service. The day that he arrived in Thailand, Anastasia Vashikevich posted this video from what appears to be the back of an open-air moving police wagon. She says she's on her way from a detention facility to a new Thai prison. In that video, speaking Russian, she begs Western journalists for help. She says, quote, I'm ready to give you all the missing puzzle pieces. Support, the, support them with videos and audios regarding the connections of our respected lawmakers, meaning Russian lawmakers, with Trump, Manafort, and the rest. I know a lot. I'm waiting for your offers. I am waiting for you in a Thai prison. She did end up in a Thai prison, and journalists did get in contact with her while she was in prison. Journalists did go to the facility where she was being held in Thailand to try to figure out what she was alleging and why she was asking for help. The New York Times conducted an interview with her in Thailand soon after that recording from the back of the police wagon. In that interview, she told the Times that she had a lot more information than she had already posted to Instagram and that Navalny had turned into this expose. She said she had more than 16 hours of audio recordings just from that trip on the yacht with Oleg Deripaska along with the Russian deputy prime minister. She told the Times, quote, if America gives me protection, I will tell everything I know. As to what was on these alleged recordings she said she had, she told the Times, quote, they were discussing elections. Deripaska had a plan about elections. She told the Times that her documentation was not just about Deripaska talking to the deputy prime minister. She said she also had documentation about conversations she said he had with three people who spoke English fluently and who struck her as probably American. CNN's Ivan Watson actually got into that Thai prison to see her as well. And although he was not able to get a camera crew inside the prison, he was able to conduct an interview with her in person, eye to eye. And then he walked back outside the prison. They turned on the cameras and he was able to immediately, said what she, immediately say what she had told him. For days, Vashukevich and several Russian friends have been held at this jail in the capital of Thailand where visitors are not allowed to bring cameras. I just came out of this detention center where I spoke with Anastasia Vashukevich. It was loud and hot and chaotic. And talking through the bars, she says that she witnessed meetings between the Russian billionaire Oleg Deripaska and at least three Americans who she refused to name. She claims they discussed plans to affect the U.S. elections but she wouldn't give any further information because she fears she could be deported back to Russia. Her claims might not hold much water if it wasn't for this. Photos published on her Instagram account of Vashukevich alongside Russian billionaire Oleg Deripaska. Deripaska, a one-time business partner of former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort. 
He's pleaded not guilty to charges related to money laundering and other alleged crimes discovered during the investigation into Russian meddling. Vashukevich's posts showed Deripaska on board his private yacht, meeting Russia's deputy prime minister, Sergei Prikhodka. Two powerful Russian men overheard in one video discussing U.S.-Russian relations. So, this young woman in jail in Thailand, she's telling the New York Times, she's telling CNN, that she's got this material, in addition to the stuff that's already been turned into a giant expose that's making the Russian government go completely crazy about Deripaska and the Russian deputy prime minister, she says she's got further photos, video recordings, audio recordings. Her documented time with Deripaska on that yacht did happen right around the time that we know Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort was in contact with Oleg Deripaska through an intermediary. We know that now through Manafort's court cases. So what she was alleging about observing some contact between the Trump campaign and the Russian government involving Deripaska and Manafort, it at least lines up in terms of the timing and what we have since learned about Manafort's behavior. And she clearly was both afraid and using what she claimed to be her access to this information to try to get herself out of jail. Quote, I am ready to help with an investigation if they help us get out of here. She managed to get another post onto Instagram around the same time. Quote, if we go back to Russia, we will die in Russian prison or they will kill us. This is very serious. Please, USA, help us not to die from Russians. Radio Free Europe later published photos of this handwritten letter that Vashikevich and her co-defendants managed to smuggle out of the prison to have a friend deliver this by hand to the U.S. Embassy in Bangkok. It says in sort of broken English, quote, we ask you political asylum and help us and protect us as quickly as possible because we have very important information for USA and we risk our lives very much. We have photo, video, audio of crimes of Russian government and I give them to USA if you help us. That all happened back in February and early March, just under a year ago. And I don't know what, if anything, the U.S. government ever did to try to help her or respond to her or not, but nine months plus went by while she and her co-defendants still sat in that Thai prison. And as we have reported uh, last week, Tuesday of last week, surprise move by a judge in Thailand resulted in her and her co-defendants being released. Nobody had seen that coming. But upon learning that they were quickly going to be released and then deported, a friend of Vashikevich told the Washington Post that Vashikevich, quote, was hoping to be deported somewhere other than Russia. That did not work. Uh, her relatives told The Bell, which is an independent news source in Russia, that the Russian consul in Thailand, senior Russian diplomat in Thailand, had assured her and assured her family back in Russia that Anastasia Vashikevich would be allowed to transit safely through Moscow without being bothered. She'd be allowed to change planes in Moscow and go home to Belarus, which is where she's originally from. Instead, as you saw from that video, she was in fact arrested at the main airport in Moscow while she went limp and journalists waited in vain to try to talk to her. This weekend, we got this sort of unsettling footage of her in court apologizing over and over and over again, apologizing to Oleg Deripaska. Russian the Russia correspondent for Britain's Telegraph newspaper reported today that he asked her several times at this court appearance if her arrest and her treatment was related to Russia's interference in the U.S. election and her evidence about that. She refused to answer any questions about that. Quote, after claiming earlier she had evidence of Russia interfering to help Trump, Vashukevich doesn't want to talk now for fear of Deripaska and Russian law. Quote, I won't compromise myself anymore. Criminal cases were fabricated against me in Thailand, in Russia. That's enough for me. Quote, she promises there won't be more recordings. She won't answer when I ask about election interference. Well, now today, Alexei Navalny, him, that Russian opposition figure, the guy who made her famous in the first place when he posted her footage of Deripaska and the Russian deputy prime minister talking about America during that presidential campaign on that yacht, the guy who initially made her famous. Today, Alexei Navalny posted new recordings audio recordings that include the sound of two Russian-speaking lawyers who appear to be associated with Oleg Deripaska and his business empire, and in a phone call concerning the arrest of Anastasia Vashukevich in Thailand, these two Deripaska lawyers appear to be 
negotiating for or trying to arrange for her to be charged with the most serious possible charges so that she would stay in prison for a substantial amount of time rather than just being released after a couple of days, which would have been the normal course for someone picked up for the type of offense for which she was initially picked up. One of the lawyers associated with Deripaska's companies, his aluminum empire, says on the recording, quote, what we are interested in is that these people be kept in jail. They should be charged. They should get a sentence which will put them in prison. The same court that Deripaska used to block access to Navalny's website for everybody in Russia, <laughs> he has now, according to Navalny, gone back to that same court to try to block access to these recordings everywhere in Russia as well. So again, it is Navalny's reporting, it is Navalny's accusation that the lawyers that you can hear on these recordings are lawyers who he believes to be associated with Deripaska and Deripaska's business empire. If that's true, Think about the universe of data here, right? He bankrolls Paul Manafort's pro-Russian work in the former Soviet Union. When Manafort comes from nowhere to become chairman of the Trump for President campaign, Manafort tells an intermediary that he'd be happy to offer Oleg private briefings on the campaign if he wants them. Prosecutors in the special counsel's office later allege that Manafort gave that same intermediary internal polling data from the Trump campaign during the campaign. Shortly after meeting in person with Manafort's intermediary, Oleg Deripaska ends up on a yacht with a nice young escort who has a very active Instagram account and the deputy prime minister of Russia. She records them talking about the United States. When that recording months later is exposed and becomes a scandal, that young woman finds herself arrested and held for way longer than other people get held for, for the sort of thing for which she got arrested. And there are now, as of today, recordings that allegedly implicate Deripaska's companies in trying to ensure that that young woman stayed in prison as long as possible after she was picked up. She went into prison claiming that she had lots more evidence, including photos and audio recordings and video recordings that included Deripaska not just talking to Russian officials, but talking to people who she believed were Americans. She said she had a photo of at least one of the Americans. She made these claims while explicitly asking for American government help. It appears that she never got that help. She now no longer wants to talk about these things. When she was finally seen in open court this weekend after being dragged onto a wheelchair and arrested in the Moscow airport, all she wanted to say in court was how sorry she is to Oleg Deripaska and how she does not want to upset him anymore and how she cannot take much more of this. She's supposed to be back in court in Moscow tomorrow. Tonight, the New York Times just broke the news that when the Trump administration moved last month, to drop sanctions on companies owned by Oleg Deripaska, a binding confidential document obtained exclusively by the Times showed that this Trump administration deal for Deripaska contains provisions that free him from hundreds of millions of dollars in debt while leaving him and his allies with majority ownership of his most important company. Of all the people in the world for the U.S. government, of all, for, <laughs> of all the people in the world, of all the people in the world, for the U.S. government to be bending over backwards to shovel money to right now. Why exactly is the Trump administration going to these lengths for Oleg Deripaska? I mean, 70 percent of House Republicans sided with Democrats and said the Trump administration should not be lifting these sanctions on Deripaska. Eleven Republican senators crossed the aisle and sided with Democrats to say the Trump administration should not be lifting these sanctions on Oleg Deripaska. For the want of two more Republican Senate votes, this thing almost got stopped. But because two more Republican senators wouldn't cross over and vote to stop the lifting of those sanctions on Oleg Deripaska, the Trump administration is about to gift him hundreds of millions of dollars. Meanwhile, Anastasia Vashukevich will be back in court tomorrow, presumably still apologizing, still trying to save her life. Ken Vogel from The New York Times joins us next. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.